Charon, also known as 134,340, Pluto I, is the largest of the five known natural satellites of the dwarf planet Pluto. It has a mean radius of 606 km. It was discovered in 1978 at the United States Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., using photographic plates taken at the United States Naval Observatory Flagstaff Station with half the diameter and one-eighth the mass of Pluto, Charon is a very large moon in comparison to its parent body. Its gravitational influence is such that the barycenter of the Plutonian system lies outside Pluto. The reddish-brown cap of the North Pole of Charon is composed of tholins, organic macromolecules that may be essential ingredients of life. These tholins were produced from methane, nitrogen and related gases released from the atmosphere of Pluto and transferred over 19,000 km miles to the orbiting Moon. The New Horizons spacecraft is the only probe that has visited the Pluto system. It approached Charon to within 27,000 km in 2015. Discovery Charon was discovered by United States Naval Observatory astronomer James Christie, using the 1.55-meter telescope at United States Naval Observatory Flagstaff Station on June 22, 1978, he had been examining highly magnified images of Pluto on photographic plates taken with the telescope to Two months prior. Christie noticed that a slight elongation appeared periodically. The bulge was confirmed on plates dating back to April 29, 1965. The International Astronomical Union formally announced Christie's discovery to the world on July 7, 1978. Subsequent observations of Pluto determined that the bulge was due to a smaller accompanying body. The periodicity of the bulge corresponded to Pluto's rotation period, which was previously known from Pluto's light curve. This indicated a synchronous orbit, which strongly suggested that the bulge effect was real and not spurious. This resulted in reassessments of Pluto's size, mass, and other physical characteristics because the calculated mass and albedo of the Pluto-Charon system had previously been attributed to Pluto alone. Doubts about Charon's existence were erased when it and Pluto entered a five-year period of mutual eclipses and transits between 1985 and 1990. This occurs when the Pluto-Charon orbital plane is edge-on as seen from Earth, which only happens at two intervals in Pluto's 248-year orbital period. It was fortuitous that one of these intervals happened to occur soon after Charon's discovery. Topic <laughs> Name Author Edmund Hamilton referred to three moons of Pluto in his 1940 science fiction novel calling Captain Future, naming them Charon, Styx, and Cerberus. After its discovery, Charon was originally known by the temporary designation S1978 P1, according to the then recently instituted convention. 
On June 24, 1978, Christie first suggested the name Charon as a scientific sounding version of his wife Charlene's nickname, Char. Although colleagues at the Naval Observatory proposed Persephone, Christie stuck with Charon after discovering that it coincidentally refers to a Greek mythological figure, Charon or Greek Charon is the ferryman of the dead, closely associated in myth with the god Hades, whom the Romans identified with their god Pluto. The IAU officially adopted the name in late 1985 and it was announced on January 3, 1986. There is minor debate over the preferred pronunciation of the name. The practice of following the classical pronunciation established for the mythological ferryman Charon IPA K -R -N is used by major English language dictionaries, such as the Merriam Webster and Oxford English Dictionary. These indicate only one pronunciation of Charon when referring specifically to Pluto's moon, with an initial K sound. Speakers of many languages other than English, and many English-speaking astronomers as well, follow this pronunciation, however, Christie himself pronounced the ch as sh after his wife Charlene. Because of this, as an acknowledgement of Christie and sometimes as an in-joke or shibboleth, the initial sh pronunciation is common among astronomers when speaking English, and this is the prescribed pronunciation at NASA and of the New Horizons team. Formation. Simulation work published in 2005 by Robin Knupp suggested that Charon could have been formed by a collision around 4.5 billion years ago, much like Earth and the Moon. In this model, a large Kuiper belt object struck Pluto at high velocity, destroying itself and blasting off much of Pluto's outer mantle, and Charon coalesced from the debris. However, such an impact should result in an icier Charon and rockier Pluto than scientists have found. It is now thought that Pluto and Charon might have been two bodies that collided before going into orbit about each other. The collision would have been violent enough to boil off volatile ices like methane CH4, but not violent enough to have destroyed either body. The very similar density of Pluto and Charon implies that the parent bodies were not fully differentiated when the impact occurred. Orbit Charon and Pluto orbit each other every 6.387 days. The two objects are gravitationally locked to one another, so each keeps the same face towards the other. This is a case of mutual tidal locking, as compared to that of the Earth and the Moon, where the Moon always shows the same face to Earth, but not vice versa. The average distance between Charon and Pluto is 19,570 km the discovery of Charon allowed astronomers to calculate accurately the mass of the Plutonian system, and mutual occultations revealed their sizes. However, neither indicated the two bodies' individual masses, which could only be estimated, until the discovery of Pluto's outer moons in late 2005. Details in the orbits of the outer moons revealed that Charon has approximately 12% of the mass of Pluto. Topic: 
Topic: Physical characteristics. Charon's diameter is 1212 kilometers, 753 miles, just over half that of Pluto and larger than the dwarf planet Ceres and the 12th largest natural satellite in the solar system. Charon is sufficiently massive to have collapsed into a spheroid under its own gravity. Charon's slow rotation means that there is almost no flattening. Its equatorial and polar radii differ by less than 1%. <laughs> <laughs> Interior Charon's volume and mass allow calculation of its density, 1.702 plus or minus 0.017 g per cc, from which it can be determined that Charon is slightly less dense than Pluto and suggesting a composition of 55% rock to 45% ice, plus or minus 5%, whereas Pluto is about 70% rock. The difference is considerably lower than that of most suspected collisional satellites. Before New Horizons flyby, there were two conflicting theories about Charon's internal structure. Some scientists thought Charon to be a differentiated body like Pluto, with a rocky core and an icy mantle, whereas others thought it would be uniform throughout. Evidence in support of the former position was found in 2007, when observations by the Gemini Observatory of patches of ammonia hydrates and water crystals on the surface of Charon suggested the presence of active cryogeysers. The fact that the ice was still in crystalline form suggested it had been deposited recently, because solar radiation would have degraded it to an amorphous state after roughly 30,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> Surface Unlike Pluto's surface, which is composed of nitrogen and methane ices, Charon's surface appears to be dominated by the less volatile water ice. In 2007, observations by the Gemini Observatory of patches of ammonia hydrates and water crystals on the surface of Charon suggested the presence of active cryogeysers and cryovolcanoes. Photometric mapping of Charon's surface shows a latitudinal trend in albedo, with a bright equatorial band and darker poles. The North Polar region is dominated by a very large dark area informally dubbed Mordor by the New Horizons team. The favored explanation for this phenomenon is that they are formed by condensation of gases that escaped from Pluto's atmosphere. In winter, the temperature is minus 258 degrees Celsius, and these gases, which include nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane, condense into their solid forms. When these ices are subjected to solar radiation, they chemically react to form various reddish tholins. Later, when the area is again heated by the Sun as Charon's seasons change, the temperature at the pole rises to 213 degrees Celsius, resulting in the volatiles sublimating and escaping Charon, leaving only the tholins behind. Over millions of years, the residual tholin builds up thick layers, obscuring the icy crust. 
In addition to Mordor, New Horizons found evidence of extensive past geology that suggests that Charon is probably differentiated. In particular, the southern hemisphere has fewer craters than the northern and is considerably less rugged, suggesting that a massive resurfacing event perhaps prompted by the partial or complete freezing of an internal ocean occurred at some point in the past and removed many of the earlier craters in 2018 the international astronomical union named one crater on charon as ravati who is a character in the hindu epic mahabharata charon has a series of extensive grabens or canyons such as serenity chasma which extend as an equatorial belt for at least 1000 kilometers Argo Chasma potentially reaches as deep as 9 km, with steep cliffs that may rival Verona Rupas on Miranda for the title of tallest cliff in the Solar System. <laughs> Mountain in a moat In a released photo by New Horizons, an unusual surface feature has captivated and baffled the scientist team of the mission. The image reveals a mountain rising out of a depression. It's a large mountain sitting in a moat, said Jeff Moore, of NASA's Ames Research Center, in a statement. This is a feature that has geologists stunned and stumped," he added. New Horizons captured the photo from a distance of 49,000 miles Observation and exploration Since the first blurred images of the Moon one, images showing Pluto and Charon resolved into separate disks were taken for the first time by the Hubble Space Telescope in the 1990s two. The telescope was responsible for the best, yet low-quality images of the Moon. In 1994, the clearest picture of the Pluto-Charon system showed two distinct and well-defined circles three. The image was taken by Hubble's Faint Object Camera FOC when the system was 2.6 billion miles 4 .4 billion kilometers away from Earth later, the development of adaptive optics made it possible to resolve Pluto and Charon into separate disks using ground-based telescopes. In June 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft captured consecutive images images of the Pluto-Charon system as it approached it. The images were put together in an animation. It was the best image of Charon to that date for. In July 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft made its closest approach to the Pluto system. It is the only spacecraft to date to have visited and studied Charon. Charon's discoverer James Christie and the children of Clyde Tombaugh were guests at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory during the New Horizons' closest approach. Classification <laughs> 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 The center of mass barycenter of the Pluto-Charon system lies outside either body. Because neither object truly orbits the other, and Charon has 12.2% the mass of Pluto, it has been argued that Charon should be considered to be part of a binary system with Pluto. The International Astronomical Union states that Charon is considered to be just a satellite of Pluto, 
but the idea that Charon might be classified a dwarf planet in its own right may be considered at a later date. In a draft proposal for the 2006 redefinition of the term, the IAU proposed that a planet be defined as a body that orbits the Sun that is large enough for gravitational forces to render the object nearly spherical. Under this proposal, Charon would have been classified as a planet, because the draft explicitly defined a planetary satellite as one in which the barycenter lies within the major body. In the final definition, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet, but the formal definition of a planetary satellite was not decided upon. Charon is not in the list of dwarf planets currently recognized by the IAU. Had the draft proposal been accepted, even the Moon would be classified as a planet in billions of years when the tidal acceleration that is gradually moving the Moon away from Earth takes it far enough away that the center of mass of the system no longer lies within Earth. The other moons of Pluto, Nix, Hydra, Kerberos and Styx, orbit the same barycenter, but they are not large enough to be spherical, and they are simply considered to be satellites of Pluto or of Pluto Charon. Gallery Videos. <gallery> 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 Topic. See also List of natural satellites Notes <laughs> <laughs>